Forecast showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. cold out here. Chilly mornings, really nice afternoons. As soon as the fog lifts, it's gonna be awesome. We're getting set up on our second morning here. Getting the boat all tied up and we're coming up to the big, fast, deep boil that uh, was the second hole we hit yesterday. And our guide was very adamant that we started here today. We still have to figure these fish out and determine exactly what gear that they're gonna wanna bite on but being first boat in a hole that we know that there's a lot of fish, it's gonna be very helpful. So I think I'm gonna start out by throwing a spinner, even though right here yesterday, I hooked two fish on a plug casting and swinging it through. I think Chuck's gonna start out with that and we're just gonna keep hucking and whining until we uh, put one up to the boat here, hopefully. Trying to get down deep, this, hole, this hole's gotta be 30 feet deep, so. My second cast out here, and I made my first cast out into the main current to try to catch the edge. Second cast, I put it right into the boil. I'm casting a half ounce red and white rooster tail with a silver blade. And I like that silver blade first thing in the morning like this, right before the sun just now came up over the hill. So if I were to start right now, I probably would have put brass out. But with just a little bit, a tiny bit of light coming through, that silver pops. It's almost white itself under the water. And second cast right here along this edge, right off the tree limbs in that back eddy. Bang, fish on, man. It's starting to bulldog me now. I'm using a really light rod. This is my steelhead rod. So I'm underpowered here for these big Chilean salmon. As you can tell, I can't even turn his head. But I got the 40 pound maximum braid on there, so I'm not worried about breaking that line. I got a 30 pound leader, so all I gotta do is just take my time and wear them out. There's nothing really to cut them off on right here. A couple of sharp rocks right there that I can easily hop out of the boat and go around it. Just gonna try and keep them right here in this dead water. Keep them out of the current, because if he gets in the current, he's gonna have the upper hand. Very methodical. Don't rush, don't force. The fish wants to go, just let them run. But as soon as they slack up just a little bit, we try and gain it all back. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. <laughs> oh, thank you. Nice. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the tail. Wow. That looks like a big hen there. 
That's awesome. That's my first Chilean river salmon. Again, most of these fish are lower river stock, and so they're gonna turn color quick, but we're not here to consume. We're here to get an understanding of this fishery and appreciate it for what it is. It's a trophy fishery. These are all big fish. This is an average size Chinook. I'm gonna grab the pliers here real quick. We'll pop the spinner out of its mouth, hold it up, get a quick shot, and let it go. That rooster tail, red and white. First thing in the morning, that white just shines really well. Or that uh, silver blade shines really well. Right in the corner, perfect. There it goes. Slides right out with the barbless. Oh, look at that thing. Bruiser hen. It, these fish look exactly like our lower Columbia River salmon. The bronze up real quick. Short, stocky, just footballs. A lot of power. That was awesome on my steelhead rod. <laughs> Way underpowered, that was great. All right, let's slip her in here. So much fun. Several thousand miles away from home. The river looks just like home. The mountains look just like home. The gear looks just like home. The fish look just like home. Might have to move down here. This is awesome. I think that these are the places where they're jumping more, where there's more numbers. I just checked my line after landing that fish and just as I suspected, it's all frayed up. So what I did is I just cut a little bit off and we're replacing it, but man, the fact that we were able to land that big of a fish on frayed up line, that's awesome. Expected, but man, you couldn't have asked for a better way to start out with that fish on the second cast. And right now, all we're doing is just keep on changing up lures, changing up colors. We know that there's a lot of fish here. Obviously, they're rolling, they're moving. We see them coming through the water. They're here. We just need to figure out exactly what they're going to key in on. So we're switching everything up from using spin glows to spinners to plugs, trying everything in the tackle box. See if we can't figure them out here again mid morning. Chuck's on. Did he rip you? Oh my gosh, like a freight train hitting another freight train. Oh God, no, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> Man, these kings are ridiculous. I mean, we're fishing in the river and they're a little bit dark, but I mean, I think that's just because, I don't know, the warm water or whatever, but they fight as hard as any salmon out of any bay or salt. They're just so big, <laughs> using light tackle, been casting and drifting a flatfish, which I've never done in Oregon or Washington ever in any, any of our rivers up there. These guys have been doing it and showing us how to do it. And I'm just going, man, don't know if that's gonna work. And just, oh. I'm gonna be doing this. Yeah, that's a big fish. <laughs> on the Rogue River, my home river. <laughs> I can't believe it. This is so fun. He's one oh. you. Oh, he came ah. off. I think, I think it came off. Well, you know what? <laughs> that's just, that's, yeah, I mean, single barbless hook. That's, that, that happens. You gotta expect that to happen. Not the first time I've lost the salmon, but that's the one that got away right there. I mean, wow. Woo! That was a big fish, man. <laughs> Seriously, dude, he ran you all the way into the back end of the pool. We thought he was gonna jump. Heck must yeah, be. Oh, man. Big guy, awesome. must be a big guy. Okay, my 30, uh, yeah. my 30 hung <laughs> yeah. right here in the middle the whole time on a steelhead rod. I, Yours went I had current, pressure back on that pool. fish the whole time. He's just, just shaking it and shaking it. I'm, I mean, just maybe, you know, just no barb. And, I was starting to wonder if he was going to go down to the next hole or got the jump of the boat because he was heading straight oh, for the next yeah. hole. Oh, man, <laughs> dang! <laughs> <laughs> to see these guys 
down here trying trying things with they're using our same gear but they're just you know experimenting and doing things that maybe you know we don't we have we're not doing at home just because we haven't seen it done before i mean i, I haven't seen that before have you cody oh for coho yeah we, we don't typically do this back at home. right right all right i mean i'm gonna be like looking for water just like this <laughs> park my boat you know <laughs> it's it's tough to i mean you're not even you can see there's not even a kicker on this boat you're not allowed to back troller you can't fish with the motor here but uh, you know, essentially you're trying to get the same action you know, from the bank. Oof, a hammer. <laughs> it's aggressive. I'm just checking my drag. It was too too low my, my drag. Now I adjust my drag and now it's working good. I felt the bite. Boom. Hit it hard? Hard. Less than chuck fish but hard. Ooh, hot fish! Fish. Good job, bud. Oh. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Big head shake. <laughs> Big head shake. The reason why we brought these rods is because they're indestructible. They just won't break. Really strong. But they still have a good action on them, just like what you're seeing right now with the fish fighting the fish. That's why we carry the rods on the boat. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no carry the rods. They're yeah. not going to break. It's big. It's very big. <laughs> very big, yep. Yeah. You fight them like a fly fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's like hey, drilling yeah. a halibut or something. It's just a rock rolling down the river in the current. <laughs> yeah. Did you tighten it right? Yeah. <laughs> I can tighten it more. <laughs> Where oh, are you out? I see. I think. Kick back, relax for a bit. Size and heart. Okay, watch the rocks here, watch the rocks. See, I can't turn guide brain off. Free Willie! Wow. Thank you. What a <laughs> hey. big guy. Look Let's at this. But look at this. It's unbelievable. Oh, isn't that big? <laughs> you got pounds on this side? Okay. Ready? That's 40 pounds right there. Oh, gosh, that hurts. Comes out nice and easy. Guys. That is a monster yeah. river Jeez. chinook. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Man. 40 pounds on the dot. That's awesome. Good job, Christian. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing this, your home river, the river you've been fishing on since you were a kid with your grandpa, catching Chinook out here. This I'm glad awesome. you'll be here. Thank you for having yeah. us. It's yeah. been a treat. All you good team, awesome. man. All right, Chuck, why don't you put its head in the water? I'll hold on okay. to the tail and we'll let the big dog go. Swim off, there he goes. Oh. Well, call it a day early. Boy, no way. <laughs> now you say. Hell no. All we're doing is just casting spinners and plugs, but here's the setup that we have. I brought my steelhead rods, thinking that that would be more than enough for these fish. And so far we've been lucky and haven't been burned too bad by them, but it's just a nine foot eight rod here. This is the Redline series. This is a six to 12 pound rod, which is why Christian and Chuck and myself took so long to land these fish. They're underpowered. I thought for sure small water we wouldn't have a problem with it, but hey, they've been holding up great. Then we just have a 3,000 size spinning reel, which is plenty of line to hold this 40 pound Maxima braid eight in the high vis. I like the braided line just because there's no stretch. It casts really yeah, nice because it allows us to cast our smaller gear like the spinners that we were using earlier today that I caught my, my fish on. It allows us to cast those further distances and it also helps us when fish around this really big heavy bedrock that we see here in the Petroway River. From there, we go on down to just a simple swivel. Then from here, anywhere from about a two foot to four foot leader, and I have 30 pound Maxima Ultra Green on here. We've run anywhere from the 30 pound Maxima Ultra Green to 40 pound fluorocarbon. But this right here is a 30 pound Ultra Green, about three foot, just a little just bumper a little. line to allow just a little bit of stretch when those big fish get up next to the boat. Here we just have a snap to switch out lures. And the one that's been working out well is either this Megalit 4.5 or the Megalit 5.0 that Chuck is using. 
and this chartreuse and blue. Our guy Christian said that this was the way to go. This is his best color, his favorite one, and he hasn't been wrong. I hooked two on it yesterday, lost them both. Chuck took a monster and unfortunately lost that one too. Christian landed his, and the reason why we're losing some fish is because it's single point barbless here. And with such a big lure, these fish can come up and grab the entire plug, and we're not gonna get a good hook in them. That last fish that Christian landed was barely in the jaw, right in the bottom underneath, just barely in there. We ended our day on the Petroway River with a shoreside lunch prepared by our guides. The hospitality of the locals and Yankee Lodge is second to none. The morning bite provided excitement for us all. Our time was running short here in Chile, but one more day remains. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Let's do it, bud. We just pulled away from the ramp there and we're getting our gear put together. The tide's coming in right now, so I really want to hurry up and get our line in the water. But we're gonna start out with a couple of different options to put down there for these fish. And we got our first nice fish of the trip here in the estuary the first couple days we were here on this exact spinner. And since it's cloudy out, I like to run a little bit of UV. So we got chartreuse on there, which will be real nice and bright. It's not even the metallic chartreuse, it's just real flat color chartreuse, so it's gonna glow down there. UV is gonna grab a lot of light. And it seems like here recently, I've really been liking any flasher that has mirror on it. So that mirror silver has been grabbing a lot of light too, and it's really been uh, helping these fish key in on that attractor to come back and find either the bait or spinner in behind. So whether I'm back home or even here, that mirror's been working. Cloudy, a little bit of UV, and the flat shirt shoe. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up, the flasher and spinner, and we're gonna put it on down. Chuck's starting out with uh, a flasher that has both pink and chartreuse, that flat color with a lot of UV as well. Again, because we're early in the morning, a good marine layer out here, lots of cloud cover. So we need that UV to grab a lot of light to grab the fish's attention. Then he has that red and white spinner on there with the UV tinsel skirt, and that one single pearl bead right in the middle. And if you look at it, it's creating a ton of contrast between the flasher and the spinner. So it looks yeah. great. You can see the other boat. Yeah. Caught one there the island and one here in the, the where we are now okay 
And it's already with fish on now. Oh, he does have one on now? Yeah. They're fighting with him. Buddy, hot fish. Woo! In my hand, dude. Dude, that was awesome. In your hand? In my hand. With the, with the spinner that Cody said is the best one. I think I said a. No way. So I'll put him back out. Get. Ah, no, dude. No, no bait or anything. That was a hot fish. What? That was mean fish. <laughs> that thing. Jumping Gosh, all over. It's going so fast. Oh man, I think I might have blown that one. Honestly, I think. How so? Huh? You can't win them all. How did you, <laughs> you blow that one? I don't know. Dude, that fish is jumping all over the place. Yeah, that was. Here, pull that spinner up. We know this thing like, works. That Mulkey five and a half blade is one of my favorite ones because it has a nice thump to it. Don't need much speed to get it going. That contrast, that white bead there in the middle, just like we talked about, you yeah. view with the cloud out and that blink between the chartreuse and pink. It's almost like you know what you're doing, Cody. <laughs> it's a pretend to. <laughs> awesome. Well, I can't uh, wait to get this thing back uh, out he's, here. He's marking a lot of fish. Look at that screen right now. Coming soon. Freshen it up real quick. Just clean it up. We're on fish. That is Let's good get news. Down. Yeah. Hooks playing Definitely shirt. a big slug of fish have come in here since the, we've been fishing. Fresh. Yeah, since the last time we were out here, it's marking way more fish. They're biting. Everybody's getting fish. And guess what? We're leaving tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make the most of this. That's right. All right, get it down, right, bud. Thanks, man. Okay. I'm in my Astoria go mode where it's like, all right, the fish are here, they should snap and let's go, let's go, let's, let's figure them out. Like every pass we make through here, if we don't get bits, like clean it all out, start over fresh. I'm making a mess already. Oh, look at that monster. That counts though. <laughs> Dude, look at that thing. Look at that thing. <laughs> The monster Chilean salmon. <laughs> <laughs> there are small ones in here. <laughs> this, is, this will be 40 pounds in four years. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, dude. Fish breaker. Another good fish? Oh, I think it's another feeder. Uh, what is it? Robot. We're catching everything but big salmon. Oh, brutal. We just had three bites right there. Chuck had that little salmon. I got this guy, and then we missed a bite on the spoon. So All at once. It's just, just bang, 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 right on that lip coming up out of the deep water. And the screen's loaded with fish. We don't have any gear in the water. All right, give me the pliers. I'm going to let this guy go. Three. Like another small one. Yeah. Not bad. They're getting bigger. Nice. <laughs> Chuck, you're you're uh, what? Two for three now? <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess so. In the hot rod today. I think it's because it's because I'm holding it. It's not in a rod holder. Extra action. That's right. I'm getting that. You know, as my head bobs, I go a little <laughs> jerk action there. A twitch. Jigging it. <laughs> That's right. Right at low slack. And we finally hooked up. It's on that exact same green spinner. It's not a huge fish, but hey, we'll take it at this point. Well, that's actually a good fish. Dude, that was 30 plus. Let's get, let's get him back. That was, a, that was a big fish. That was, I got to see it. There was, that was a. Uh... You, you, you work this you got hard. got on the wolf, man. <laughs> yeah. You, you work this hard to get bit. Finally happens, and it's a big fish. What sucks about that fish is they just swam right at the boat, and I couldn't keep any attention. He just kept coming up in the water column, and when you have a camera attached, plus a bumper, plus a long leader, ah, you just... Brutal. You just lose them sometimes, so I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. Jeez. Oh, my God. That was a big fish too. Oh man! Yeah. Green spinner again. That had the. Uh, was that? That it? had the bloody tuna on it. Dude. Come on, positive. Yep. Where it goes? <laughs> do it one more time. We we'll get another one. It's that same green spinner here. 
gold blade that Hildebrandt shines great, especially this actual gold blade in this high sun with a little tiny ripple. Then I'm just gonna put bloody tuna scent. It's been rubbed off because we're using it so much. I'm just gonna put it on the shank of the hook, on the swivel, right in the head of the skirt right there. It should be good to go. Time to put it back down. He's right here at the boat again. Oh, don't do that right here. That's how we lost the last one. Oh, come on. Go, run. Run away from the boat. There you go. Oh, it's, oh. The shark. I don't want him next to the boat until he's tired. I don't think my heart's ever raced this much for salmon in like 10 years. And I think it's because we just work so hard. We got the cameras here and everything. Just, oh. Good, do that, do that. He's coming up over here. On the other side, jump oh. on the other side. Oh. Are you scared of me? Are you scared of me? Are you scared of me? No. Okay. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's strong fish. He's big. He's fresh. Oh. Yeah. Good job. Nice work, buddy. You deserve that fish all okay. day long. You got next one. <laughs> I'm coming too close good, to losing good these Good work, things. dude. He's jumping oh, on the other side of the boat man. a half dozen times. Look at the size of that slab. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So it's a little bit smaller fish than what we lost, but I, like Chuck said, I'm just always amazed at the consistent quality of size of these things. Fins are moving, pectoral fins are sticking straight out. Just about ready to go. Bright fish too, just gorgeous. That is a killer fish. There she goes. There she goes. Bloody Top fish. boat, yeah, Top boat right here. 6,000 miles away from our home waters in the Pacific Northwest, and we felt at home. The anglers we encountered during our time in Chile, shared our same passion for these fall Chinook. These fish found a way to thrive in unfamiliar waters, discover new spawning grounds, and food sources. Yankee Lodge here in Chile is at the forefront of a new fishery. This is where cold water anglers will come to experience the power and size of king salmon not found anywhere else in the world.